All right, very cool stuff, guys. In the last video, we didn't do any coding. We took a little break. We checked out the Firebase console, and now it is time to actually start getting down and dirty and writing some of that code. So what we're gonna do first, which is kind of the most logical thing, at least in my head, is that since we already know how to authenticate users, we can now set up their user profiles in our database. So I wanna make that discrepancy because when I first started using Firebase and when I first started building apps, I was quite confused about how we already had a user authenticated, but we didn't have a user profile. And those are two separate things. So we sign them in, but then we also wanna write their data to our database. And so that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna authenticate a user and then we're gonna create their user profile. And so this will be our first example of how to make a collection in Firebase, how to manage that collection, how to write data, and then also how to fetch data from that collection. All right, welcome back everybody. Welcome back yet again. We took a break in the last video from coding and we just set up a database in our Firestore database just manually. But now we're gonna do it from code because that's obviously how our app's actually going to work. So now we have a good understanding of the high level of how collections and documents work. Now we're gonna dive in and actually set some stuff up. And we're gonna start generally with how most app flows start. Basically the user in our app is going to go, they're gonna get authenticated. They're going to get a user ID, and then we're going to use that user ID to create their user profile in our database. So we're going to have a collection of users and then all of their documents. So let's get that going first. We're going to jump back into our Xcode project, or actually, let's go back to the documentation. Go for Cloud Firestore, get started. So we didn't actually write any code yet and see what we have to do. Add the Firebase SDK. We already did that. Add the Firestore library. We haven't done that yet. So we go back to Xcode and go to our target here. We're gonna go to our project navigator, go to our target general, coming down for frameworks libraries, and we're gonna click that plus. Again, if you don't have Swift package already, if you don't, again, if you don't have the Swift package installed, gotta import the whole Swift package first, and then you get access to all of the all of the packages within the Firebase SDK. We're looking for Firestore. You'll see there is the main one, there's a combine one, which I guess is made by the community. So if I, we wanted to use combine in our functions, there's probably some extra functions here. And there's a Swift one, which I think probably has like the async await stuff in it, which we're gonna use. So let's click this one. Let's also click this one. I'm gonna hold the command button and click on this. So it selects these two and let's add them to our app. That simple, we got Firestore ready. Now we can import Firestore. Let's go back to the documentation quick. When finished, okay, prototype and test. We're just gonna start setting up our database. So initialize Cloud Firestore, very simple. First, you have to call Firebase app.configure to configure the entire Firebase SDK. We're already doing that in our app. And then you wanna configure the actual database. And that's a simple firestore.firestore. This is a singleton pattern that we have seen before and that's our database. So all we need to do is access this and then we can access collections in our database or wherever we want to read or write from. All right, add data. Essentially, you go to the database, you pick, you tell it what collection to go to. So we're gonna need names of our collections and then you add a document. What this is showing us here is we can also, so when you read, you can go to the collection and you can read, get all documents or we can read specific ways, which are in the other, documentations where we could say get a specific document for just one or query on all the documents and get all that fit a certain query or filter or something like that. Lastly, it's telling us to secure our data for the Cloud Firestore rules, but we're going to do that in a separate video coming up. So we're just going to ignore that. Cool. All right, let's actually just start writing some code. Why not? Come back to our app here. And so our app has a settings view and when the user logs out, they go back to this sign in view. And let's, we're gonna make an intermediary view between these two. So sign in and then they're gonna go to our actual app. And then from there, they can access the settings button like a real app might. So 
Let's see, let's start getting a little organized here before we write some more code. I'm going to create another folder, call this core. It's gonna be all the core views in our app. So maybe not exactly authentication related, but it's just a, a core, a view, view model, basically. I'm gonna move the root view into the core. I'm gonna move the authentication, sign in email, and the settings view to the core. And I'll keep these three as the authentication folder. All right, I will note that we have our view models within each of our views. So we should probably clean that up a little bit too while we're here. Let's just create a group here called things and create a new file here called settings view model. I'm gonna cut the settings view model from the settings view and move it down here. And let's move the settings view into here as well. Let's create another folder, a new group. We will say, maybe let's call this authentication. And we're gonna have the authentication view in here as well. I think there's a view model. Yep. Well, let's create a new file for the view model just to stay a little bit organized because there's gonna be a lot more files that we have to create in this course. Authentication view model, let's move this into there. And then we have the sign in email view, which is kind of like a child of the authentication view. So I'm just gonna make a group in here called subviews. And just put the sign in email view as a sub view of that. I, don't, I can make it its own folder, but I think this is, and let's create a separate file for the view model here. Nice and organized, I think at least. Cool. All right, so let's fold this up. So we have our settings view, our authentication view, and now we're gonna make another view. So let's call this one profile view. So profile, let's put it between our auth and our, and let's right click new file, Swift UI view. And let's call this one, guess it, profile view. Sweet. Click create. Let's get this set up here. Let's get some code going here. Let's get the canvas work in here. Man, it's funny how some playlists are like so UI heavy and then some are just not, right? Like the Swift UI bootcamp, every single one, it was like created Swift UI view. Check out the canvas. And in this one, it's much more like we got to work on the back end. We got to figure out our manager classes. Generally, you'll see as you get, I, I think at least as you get better at coding or more advanced, at least you end up spending less and less time on the actual view because creating the view with the buttons and the design is actually relatively easy. It's moving the data around efficiently. Uh, that is the hard part. And like architecting your app, that's where you get paid the big bucks. That's the most senior engineers at any company are generally not making the buttons. They're making the architecture. So the fact that in this playlist, we're working a lot more on like backend stuff proves that we are, I think at least getting a little bit more advanced as we go, at least compared to the Swift UI bootcamp. All right. So we are here and we have our new view. When we get to this view, we're gonna be in a navigation stack. So let's just add a navigation stack wrapper to this. All right, we're gonna create a super, super simple user profile. Let's create maybe a list and let's give it a nav title of profile. All right. And when we get to the user profile, let's see. Uh, the profile is gonna have an access to the settings that we made in the last video. So let's just add a dot toolbar with some content and we're going to add in a toolbar item. Let's use the placement of nav bar trailing. And I'm just going to put a image with a system name of gear, which is the normal uh, kind of settings icon. And we'll just give it a font of headline. Cool, we got our, our, we got our gear up there. And then what's gonna be on the screen? Well, when we log users into our app, we're gonna then load up their user profile and display that. So we're gonna do some loading. So we're probably gonna need a view model. So let's create a app main actor, final class. Let's call it profile view model. Conform to observable object and open the brackets. Later in this series, I will move this to its own file. But let's keep it here for now just to move fast. Let's initialize this in our 
view here. So at state object, private var view model of type profile view model. And we can just initialize one for now. All right. And now let's create a function here to load current user. All right. And we'll say let off data result equals the, the auth manager shared dot get authenticated user. So after, so our flow is going to be users authenticate, sign into our app, and then we're going to get their user profile and then we're going to display that on the screen. So the, we have to try await this result, which means this function must be asynchronous and it must throw an error. And if we get it, let's just put it on the screen. We'll say at published private set var, we'll say user of type auth data result model equals nil. And we're just going to set self.user equal to that. This is actually synchronous. So we can just put that here. We don't need to do async here. And then when the screen appears on a peer, let's just call view model dot load current user try i don't care about the errors thrown here and then let's just put on the screen a little text that has the user id so say user id with a colon and then let's just put on the user id so we're going to say if let user equals view model dot user and then we'll put their id on the screen here we'll say user dot ui so this is actually going to push to our settings view so right now in our root view, we have a navigation stack that pushes to, that shows our settings view. But really what we want is a navigation link here, destination and label. The destination will be our settings view. The label will be that image. Now the settings view needs to bind to a show sign in view. So let's just add in a binding here. We'll say at binding var show sign in view of type cool. So that we can bind to it here as well. And let's now create our profile view. So back to our root view, this is actually going to be profile view and we will pass in show sign in view. All right, we might refactor that out later, uh, but I think it's gonna work for now. Let's run the app. Let's test out this flow, just make sure it works. Looks like in the profile view, we also need to update the preview here for show sign in view. Let's use a constant of false. Let's build and run real quick. Unfortunately, the Firebase SDK takes a very long time to build, which is why I try to use previews as much as we can. But I'm going to use a simulator right now. All right, so my app loaded. This is from a previous bunch of videos. And basically we're just going to sign in our user through Firebase authentication. And then hopefully it goes through and we can get a profile. If you are just joining and you haven't set all this up and you don't want to, basically all we need is a user ID to move forward. So you could just create a fake user ID and just plug that in where we have our user ID. But anyway, we can see our user ID here. If I go back to that Firebase console and I go to the authentication, we can see that we have this new F5ZZ, same user ID that is in my app. So right now in our app, on the profile view, we are loading the authenticated user, right? And that is this auth data model. And so that's coming from the authentication SDK basically. And it has UID, email, photo URL is anonymous. This is good. This is some data, but realistically in our app, we are going to want tons more data than just this for our users. So when we get to the user profile, we actually want to load in their whole profile, not just their auth profile. And that is separate because we're going to store their profile, not in the authentication, but in the database. So what that means is when we actually authenticate a user, we should actually set up their profile in our database. All right, so we're going to backtrack now. I'm going to log out. And the next time we sign in, we're gonna set up a profile and then move them back into our application. So firstly, let's find those functions where we are actually 
authenticating users. And I think that's in our auth view, authentication view model, actually. Cool. So we have these three. We also have the sign in with email, which is in the other screen. Remember, that's the, the child's view model of this. So let's see what happens here, actually. The sign in with Google, Apple, we're going to work with the anonymous one for now, just because it's easier. I don't have to keep logging in every time. So when we call these sign-in flows, we're getting back that auth data result. So we can say let auth data result equals this. And that again is that data model we just looked at. It's got the user ID in it. And so when they sign in, we aren't going to register that as complete until we sign them in and create their profile. So now we're going to take the UID from this and create a user profile. And just like we have an authentication manager, we are now going to set up another manager just to manage the functions in our database. We're going to keep nice and clean code. So up here, we have utilities authentication. I'm going to create another group and call it Firestore, just because that's the section of this series. Normally in an app, I would have a section called like managers and it would have our authentication manager as well as all, all of the other ones we're going to create. But I'm separating these just because it's like a bootcamp thing. So in our Firestore folder, we're going to create a new file and it'll be a Swift file. We don't need a view and we're just going to call this the user manager. We're going to click create. This just like our authentication is going to be a final class of user manager and open the brackets. And now again, if we look at the documentation of Firestore, they tell us basically get that create the database and then create a collection and then add documents to the collection. Super simple, very straightforward. So let's go back to our code and let's first create that database. So let's first try to get that collection. So let's create a function called create new user. So we're going to create a user in our database. And to call that, we're going to we're going to try to access that collection. So it just said to access the database is Firestore, which we should actually import Firebase Firestore, import Firebase Firestore Swift. And now we can call Firestore dot Firestore, get that instance, and we can access a collection. Now we don't have collections in our database right now, but Firebase is smart. So if we are referencing a collection that is not yet there, it automatically will create it, which is beautiful. So we're not even gonna touch it here. We are just gonna touch it here. And this is gonna be the user's collection. And then the question is within this collection, what document do we want to write to? So now we could just do add document and that's basically gonna auto-generate a document with an auto-generated ID. But this is a new user and we have their user ID. So let's make the document ID the user ID. So here we're going to pass in a user ID of type string. And then we're going to say within this collection, go to the document that is user ID. And then we'll, what we want to do is we can delete the document. Obviously, we don't want to do that. We can set data on the document. And we can update data on the document. And there's a and there's a pretty big difference. Set data basically overwrites the document for the new document that you are adding. Whereas update data is only going to add fields to the existing document. Update data is generally safer, but you can't update data unless the document already exists. So if the document does not exist, update data fails. So when we're creating a new user, we want to set data. But most of the time when we're editing their document, we're going to want to update data. So for now, let's set data. And we have a bunch of completions here. We're going to get into some of these later. You'll see. So set data, we can do it from an encodable. So if we have a data model, we can set it directly from a data model, which we'll do later. But for right now, let's set data using a dictionary. And I'm going to look at this one with the merge fields. I'm going to look at this one with the merge fields. Merge means if there's an existing data there, do you want to merge this into that one or not? And so usually if you have merge, it could be true. If we're creating a new user, there should never be a document there. So merge should probably be false. I'm going to open this up 
and we're going to need to put some data in here. So here I'm going to say of our user data, and that will be of type a dictionary with keys of string and values of any, just like it's requesting here in our function. And we're going to set this equal to a dictionary. And the question is, what fields do we want? Well, the first thing we're going to add is the user ID into the documents. We'll say user ID underscore ID colon, and we're going to pass in the user ID. We're actually, when we create the new user, we actually have the auth data result model that we saw before. So let's actually pass that in. We'll say auth of type auth data result model. So here we can pass in the auth.uid. Inside that auth model, we also have a Boolean of whether or not they're anonymous. So let's say is underscore anonymous. Auth dot is anonymous. And then I also want to add in the date created. It's just a good habit when you create a new document to add in a. So Firebase does accept Swift dates. So we could add a date, but even better than that, Firebase has its own timestamp date type. Now, when using Firebase, I recommend using the timestamp because the timestamp is more universal. It, is, it takes into account like all of the different time zones that users are reading, writing from. So I'm just going to use a timestamp, which comes from the Firebase SDK. I also want to add in the email and the photo URL from this auth data result. So I'm going to do here email. And I pass in the auth.email. One problem we're going to get here is that the email is optional, right? So we have, we can handle this however we want to in our app. You could keep this. And if it's null, it will just be a null value in the database. That's totally fine. You could give it a default value if there, it's nil. So there's actually always at least a string there. Or we could just only add the email if we have one. So I can just say if let email equals auth.email and then add in the user data at key email equals the email. The important thing here to note is that when we later download and decode our data model, we need to know which ones are going to be optional, right? Because if, if the email is nil and the data model is going to require the email, then the de decoding is going to fail. So this is going to be optional, meaning when we create our data model, it should also probably be optional. Same thing for the profile URL, if let URL equals auth dot photo URL, let's actually call it photo URL and we'll say user data and I'll just say photo underscore URL equals photo URL. Let's take our dictionary, pass it in and then merge. We'll just put false. There's not a document there, so it doesn't really matter. All right, this function, we can't find user ID, is the auth.userID now. And I think we're gonna get some errors here, right? We run this, this set data. I think we wanna use the, I think we wanna use the async method here. This should actually be async throws. And we're going to try await to get this. Let's, Build real quick just to make sure it compiles. My Xcode's running a little slow right now. I can't tell if this is actually going to compile or not. All right, build succeeded. That is awesome. All right, so now we want to call this from our app, of course. I and mean, just like we did with the auth manager, we're going to make the user manager a singleton. Static let shared equals user manager. And we'll create a private init. Again, I'm not a fan of the singleton design pattern. Larger scalable apps will not have singletons, but for this bootcamp, I think it's fine. Now we can call it user manager shared create new user. Let's go back to our authentication view model. After they sign in anonymously, we get that result. Let's then call try await user manager share create new user. We'll pass in their auth data result. So now our assign anonymous function only returns back to the application if both the authentication does not throw an error and the creating user in our database does not throw an error. Let's run this real quick. All right, I'm back here. So when I click this sign in anonymous, it should create a profile in my database. So let's see here. GKN is the UN. I'm going to reload my Firestore. 
We have our users collection was just created. GKN is my user ID. And just like that, we have our user profile set up. Now, of course, we're going to want to add to this user profile as the user builds out their profile, but we have the document here and it's perfect, right? Their user ID matches the user ID and authentication. Everything is clean and organized. This is looking great. So, all right, now we're going to go back to our app and we're going to go down to, so this, so this flow we should probably do on all of our sign-ins. So I'm going to actually copy this, paste it here. And I'm going to streamline this, streamline it here as well. We need to do this. And I think we need to, need to do it on the email screen as well. So let's go to our, what is it? Sign an email view model and same thing here. So we have separate functions for signing in and creating. Remember, this is creating a new document in the database. So if they're signing in, they should already have that document from when we created it. So we shouldn't, we don't want to overwrite that. So I'm going to put it separately here. Again, we're going to say let auth data result equals. All right. Now, when we get to our profile view, we're loading this auth data result model, right? But there's actually a lot more data that there's actually other, but we no longer really want to deal with this auth model we want the actual user model so if i look at my database right and this is going to grow in time we're going to add in maybe users premium users name all that good stuff user profile image and none of that's going to ever be in our auth model this is going to be in our user profile so for example the date created is already not in our auth user it's only in their user profile so when we get to the profile screen we actually want to load this document we don't want to load that other auth document and there is, again, a fundamental difference. That auth model is saved on the device. It is synchronous. Loading this data model is, we're going to ping the server, is asynchronous. So let's try to create a data model for this. So let's come back to our app here. And we're going to load the current user. And so we need a function in our user manager to get the user. So let's say func get user. And we're going to get them by user ID. So we're going to pass in a user ID of type string. And we know we're going to ping the server, so it must be asynchronous. And there's a chance that it doesn't work, so it must throw an error. And it needs to return some sort of data back, some sort of user model, which we have not built out yet. So I'm just going to put this as a string for now. And we're going to change the type in a second. Let's start writing some code on how we can get the user. So firstly, we need to access the user document, obviously. So let's get a reference to the document here. So let's copy this code here. And we're going to say let snapshot equals try await. So at the document, we're going to then call dot get. And we can get a document with a decodable. So if we have a data model that conforms to codable, we can get it directly. Or we can just get the document as a snapshot. We're going to do that first. So get document as the snapshot, which we get here. And then how do we unwrap that document snapshot to the ID that we have, to the data that we want? So user ID, I'm just going to pass in here. Let's say guard let data equals the snapshot dot data. So this is, if you can see it here, this converts the snapshot basically to a dictionary. So the same way we added a dictionary with these keys and these values, we're now getting the snapshot and converting it back literally into this same dictionary. So we're going to just say dot data and I'm going to say else. And we will, if we can't get the data from the dictionary, we'll just throw a URL error, say bad server response, throw that back to our application. If we can get the data, let's then try to get all of these values from the data. So I'm going to say, let, I'm just going to do one for each of these. So let user ID equals data at key user underscore, user underscore ID, same exact key that I used up here. And when we look at this data, it is of type. Keys is string and then type is any, but we know that the user ID was a string when we added it. So we're going to cast it as a string. Let 
is anonymous equals data under at key is underscore anonymous as a bool, but email data email as string let photo url equals data photo url as string and let's see what else we got let date created equals data date underscore created as date one really cool thing that just comes in the Firebase package is that we uploaded the date as a timestamp. So if we look at our database, the date is actually this really cool timestamp. It's not a swift date, it is actually a timestamp. And then when we decode that back, we can actually just cast the timestamp as a swift date, which is super convenient. So we pushed it as a timestamp and we're pulling it just as a date. Really, really cool feature there. And then finally, let's return a user now the Firebase SDK has a user object. We saw that when we created our auth data result model, there already was a user object. So I don't want to create another object called user. And so let's create another object that's actually called maybe database user. So I'm going to, so I'm going to up here, create a struct and call it DB for database user. And in here, I'm going to pass in all of these values. So let's just copy these, paste them up here. And let's just say user ID of type string is anonymous of type bool, email of type string, photo URL of type string, and a date created of type date. All right, now remember when we uploaded these, some of these were optional. So when we decode them, we kind of want to match that same, the same protocol that we uploaded it for. So personally, I think a safe bet is basically making everything that you can optional. In Swift, we can deal with optionals and we can always safely unwrap them. But email, I will make optional. Photo URL, I'll make optional. And day created, I'll make optional. Day created probably will never be optional, but I don't think it hurts to have it as an optional date here. And then let's create the database user from our data. So database user, I did not make a user ID option because I want, there always should be a user ID. That's pretty important. Like we can't really do anything with this model if we don't have an ID for the user. And so let's actually unwrap this in our guard statement up here so that we make sure we get the user ID. So we'll pass this up here. So we'll put the user ID, we'll put the is anonymous, we'll put the email, put the photo URL, we'll put the date created. And we'll return this back to our user. Let's go back to our profile view. Did we get a warning? What is this warning? We need to return a database user from this function. Is anonymous is actually a, is actually optional as well. So let's just put a optional on that. Cool. All right, let's call this from our app. So I'm gonna go back to the profile view and instead of a auth data result model, let's put in a database user. All right, and very simply, we're gonna call self.user equals try await user manager shared dot get user for a user ID. Now we don't have the user ID. Sometimes you might wanna save that locally. I'm just gonna get it from this authenticated user. So we're gonna say let auth data result equal this and we'll say this dot uid now we have an asynchronous call so this function should probably be asynchronous as well and then we're going to load it from our view so this will be asynchronous we need to try await which means we probably should do it in a task all right if we get to the user let's put the user id on the screen so user dot user id Let's also add in some other values as well. And so let's add in a little bit other data that we have. So we'll say maybe if let is anonymous, the user dot is anonymous. So if we have a value, let's put that on the screen. Text is anonymous of, with a colon and we'll put in the is anonymous dot description dot maybe capitalized. All right, let's run our app real quick and just make sure that it works because we wrote a lot of code. 
and I'm signed in, and it looks like my database user did load. Is anonymous is true. We know we are anonymous, and now we are successfully uploading and downloading that user profile. And there is a ton more we want to do with this to write better code, more scalable code, and then just play around with the database in general. But I'm going to save that for different videos just to break it up a little bit. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was our first connection to Firestore. We wrote a little bit of code, not too much, kind of just prepping for the next couple videos. All right. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.